Alright, hey what's up guys, we're back with another video, and in today's video, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one, HBM actually just released his new update about 3 hours ago, um, from the start of this video, it was about 3 hours ago, hello Mr. Innerman, how you doing? But uh, um, <laughs> I, this one's gonna be pretty exciting, there's a lot to cover, a lot to go over, so let's get right into it. Alright, so one of the biggest and most notable changes of this update is the Tesla coil. We all saw this in his new uh, video, I guess you could say, it's a, a pretty interesting... <laughs> Pretty interesting idea, I guess. A lot of a lot of people who played Clash of Clans would definitely uh, definitely know what this is. But uh, basically, the Tesla coil is something it will electrocute and kill any living animal or entity within 10 blocks of its radius. Now there is a way to not get electrocuted. Uh, you can either wear iron armor or rubber armor. Which let me check. I actually don't know if we have rubber armor. I don't think we do. I know we have iron armor, so we'll test that. Oh, no, actually, no, it said metal armor, not iron, but any kind of metal armor. Which is kind of interesting, because you wouldn't think uh, wearing metal would protect you from getting electrocuted, but, you know, we're not going to question his logic. Uh, <laughs> HBM, you are the god, I guess. Alright, but anyways, um, let's turn this thing on, and we'll see what it does. Alright, so as you can see, turning on, immediately it tries to electrocute me. If I was in survival, I would be dead very quickly. Um, we're gonna spawn, let's get a, a zombie, or something with a little bit more health than usual. I know zombies and zombie pigmen, zombie pigmen have a little bit more health. How much is it? I wonder how much power this is consuming, to be honest. I have no idea. Let's get, um, oh, so it's actually consuming, actually, it's not that bad. It's only taking about 10,000 HE, or 100, it's only taking about 100,000 HE per second, or 10,000 HE, something like that. Alright, so it's not, it's not too bad, but, um, let's get, um, <laughs> Let's get something else. All right, so we've got a couple or a few entities here, and I'm kind of curious because I got a Hunter Chopper, a Tainted Creeper, and an Iron Golem. Obviously, it will attack the Tainted Creeper and the Hunter or the Iron Golem, but I'm not so sure about the Hunter Chopper because it's kind of like, um, it's not really a, a living entity, but let's see here. Oh, it will. Okay. It does not do any damage. It doesn't look like. All right, so it doesn't do any damage. But it does look like it will attack it. Maybe the Hunter Chopper just has way too much health for it to do any damage to. Um, I mean, it is on hard, so it probably has a lot of health. The Tainted Creeper, obviously. Dies pretty quickly, and we get ourselves a nice little bit of TNT there. Nice. And now, we got the Iron Golem. Now, I will be this thing has 100 health, so I will be pretty impressed if it kills it decently quickly. Ooh, all right, so it did kill it somewhat quick. I'm not gonna lie. That is uh, that is pretty good This this as a defense mechanism if you were to set this up around your base This would be 10 out of 10 literally within 10 block spaces You could just make a wall around your base of just Tesla coils. This would be very effective All right now from the trailer you guys also notice let me turn this off You guys also notice that we have new kinds of barrels We have safe barrels iron barrels steel barrels magnetic barrels and tons of other stuff, but there's quite a lot more to go through. That's for you guys to discover and find out. There's also miniature barrels. Um, I believe there's like uh, smaller fluid barrels. Let me check. Um, there's smaller fluid tanks, I think, right here. Yeah, there's small fuel tank now. So there's all kinds of new stuff. Not really sure why you'd want a small fuel tank, but hey, it's whatever. So a safe barrel, as you guys can see, uh, pretty common looking like what you'd see in any kind of fluid barrel ever. It's just plastic, I guess you'd say. Um, now, a safe fluid barrel cannot store hot fluids, cannot store corrosive fluids because it's obviously just made out of plastic, and cannot store any matter. So these kind of barrels have specific uses, and an iron barrel cannot store hot fluids, which I guess, I mean, it doesn't really make sense because it's iron, but I guess iron does a melting point. It cannot store corrosive fluids properly and cannot store any matter. So it, it would be able to store corrosive fluids, but it would probably just destroy the barrel over time and then you'd have a mess to clean up, so that wouldn't be fun. And obviously this is what the iron barrel looks like. Now our next one is a steer barrel, and it can store hot fluids because it's steel and that has a very high melting point. It can store corrosive fluids and it cannot store any matter. I, the magnetic one is probably the only one that can store any matter, anti-matter I believe, which would make sense. Um, so can store hot fluids, can store corrosive fluids, and can store any matter, like I said. So this one is really the one that you want to go for out of all of them. The magnetic, magnetic barrel is probably the best. I don't know the crafting recipe for it, but hey. Um, Alright, so the next one, I believe it's called a star metal crate. Yep. Now this, uh, I believe, I believe it falls from the ground. Okay, so the star metal crate drops useful items like ammo and bottle caps. So I'm assuming these either just spawn randomly throughout the land, or falls from the sky from drops, I think? I'm not sure. Or from airdrops. But that does, let's get a crowbar, maybe we can open it. 
crowbar. Maybe we can, maybe we can. Let me go into survival mode. Oh, oh, so you just break it. Okay, that makes more sense. We got a stem pack, some, okay. Yeah, that was really helpful. Okay, yeah, I'm down for that. And obviously we got the new star mode. I do want to try some more things with the Tesla coil, obviously. So um, I'm going to go to the end and we'll, I'll see you guys there. I think you guys know what we're going with this. All right, so we're in the end now. Now what I wanted to try to do, let me get rid of this. It's going to get annoying. What I wanted to try to do was set up a bunch of Tesla coils and see if we can actually kill the Ender Dragon with Tesla coils, let alone, well, first let's test if it does any damage to him. This will be, uh, I'm kind of curious to see. So we'll set this up really quick. All right, so we do have the Tesla coil set up and now all we have to do is just lure this boy over here. Oh, dude, it, oh my God. God, it just killed that Enderman real quick. That was, uh, that was brutal. Let's set up a bunch of these, actually. We'll just kind of make, like, a minefield of these things. All right, well, my poor attempts of trying to set up a minefield kind of failed. I'm not really sure why, but it does not seem to want to spread over here, unfortunately. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, Jesus. The weird thing is about the Tesla coils is they do a lot of damage to separate entities, like, small enemies, like zombies, creepers, enderman, skeletons, you know, stuff like that. It does a lot of damage to small enemies, but the second it comes to, like, withers, endermans, and stuff like that, it does almost no damage whatsoever, which is a little bit weird. Can't really get him to come to me, but the last time he came to us, it did practically nothing. Hold on, we'll see right here. Yeah, it zapped him. Didn't do any damage, really. I mean, maybe a sliver of damage, like we can't even see it, but honestly, I don't think it did anything. I think that'll be the end for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed, and, you know, like would be greatly appreciated if you guys enjoyed the video. And subscribe if you're new, as always, to become a part of our little cat family, I guess. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.